foggy day in London town. He led me low, he led me down, and suddenly I saw you there, hello, Mr. Rumbold. Morning, Mr. Harmon. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm glad you asked me that. I'm running this tube up and down this carpet due to the fact that there is a motor in here which causes a vacuum and thus sucks up the dust off of the carpet. It goes down that pipe into a bag. It is what is known as oovering up the dust, due to the fact that Hoover was the first in the market. Now, if Goblin had been the first in the market, I'd been gobbling up the dust. <laughs> I merely meant, why are you doing it and not the cleaners? Well, seeing as though it's the worst fog we've had since 1953, they phoned up and say there wasn't coming. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if anyone's coming. Well, there's only two on the ground floor. Mr. Ackroyd's walking about with a candle stuck on his head so they know where to go to get their bill signed. Well, how did the <laughs> fog get in there? Some silly burke left the side door open. <laughs> I'm very careless. I don't know who it was, but rumour has it he's a bald-headed person with one or two other outstanding features. <laughs> <laughs> The Demon King! <laughs> Apparently some idiot left the side door open and filled the place with fog. Yeah, well, the culprit is discovered. And that will do, Mr. Harmon. You should be down in the basement. Oh, very well. But first, I am going to the pets department to procure for myself a canary, which I will put in a cage and lower to see if the atmosphere down there is suitable for my respiratory organs. <laughs> Come on, R2-D2. <coughs> Well, at least you're here on time, Peacock. Congratulations. Quite by chance. I was coughing myself to death at the bus stop when a vintage Rolls Royce drew up. <laughs> and inside was none other than young Mr. Grace. Without winding down the, the window, he mouthed the words, Would you like a lift? I don't suppose he wanted the fog getting into his car. Indeed he didn't. I travelled eight miles on the running board. <laughs> Oh, well, report to me when the others do arrive. I have an important announcement to make. Certainly, sir. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, what on earth are you doing in that? Well, that's charming, isn't it? First time I've been early in three weeks, and that's the welcome I get. You surely haven't hopped all the way from Highgate. I couldn't get home last night because of the fog, so I spent the night in the camping departments. Unfortunately, the zip is stuck. Oh, here, yeah. get out of this thing. Uh, uh, look, there, 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 the store's open. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, you have just lost us a sale. Now, where are your clothes? They're still in the tent. Go and get them on. And get a dressing gown out of stock. <laughs> far as Tower Bridge, the buses aren't running. So I got into my gear, I went down to the bottom of the garden, waved bye-bye to my mother and jumped in the canal. I thought I'll turn right at the sluice and come in with the tide. Apart from a bit of a fracas with a boy at Battersea. Mm -hmm. B-U-O-Y. It was quite an uneventful trip. Till I got picked up by the river police on their arse dick. A-S-D-I-C, full stop. <laughs> Apparently I was given a very strange reading, so they hauled me in, peeled me suit off, showed me to the sergeant who took one look at me and said, we don't keep tiddlers, and threw me back. What are you doing? I've just put new batteries in your stress indicator. Am I worn out already? Yes. You must be getting very excited recently, you naughty boy. Well, it's, uh, it's a secretary of mine. Yes. Well, let's see if your equipment's working properly. <laughs> Are you ready for the test? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I 
should be flashing. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> Grace. I'm all right. <laughs> Lucky they made me my reading glasses. Oh, Mr. Grace, you asked me to get Mr. Rumbold. Oh. Well, he's on the line. Yeah. You're looking very pretty this morning. Mm. Oh. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. How about dinner tonight? Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, do you want my wife as well? Are you going on about that? <laughs> I said, do you want my wife? You'd do anything to get on in this firm. <laughs> uh, have got a slight problem, sir. The perfume display from the Bliss people has arrived, but the Bliss girl, who was supposed to serve behind the counter, hasn't. Well, uh, use your initiative. Oh, right, sir. Uh, what shall I do? <laughs> somebody else. The best people are paying us fifty pounds a day. We don't want to lose that. You sent for me? Oh yes, sir. Uh, uh, unplug my charger, will you? We don't want to waste electricity. <laughs> <laughs> will there be anything else, sir? Yes, you're fine. <laughs> so, anyway, we both came out of the pictures, you see, and. We got into her sports car and she's sitting there brushing her long blonde hair in the driving mirror. You know, the way they do. And she turns to me and she said, um, shall I drop you home? You refused, of course. Well, no, she behaved herself quite well in the cinema. <laughs> Apart from when she reached over to get a chocolate and I had the box on my lap. <laughs> that, that was when she was looking for the one with the art centre, was it? <laughs> She wasn't best pleased when she had to make do with the marzipan. <laughs> anyway, you see, we get outside the front door and she said, she looked at me, coy like, you know, and she said, uh, are you going to invite me in for coffee? And did you? Well, no, I got a crack in my Kona. <laughs> so, anyway, she said, well, we'll have to say goodnight here then. And she flung her arms round my neck and she grappled with me like Mick McManus. You never told me you'd been out with Mick McManus. <laughs> to mock me, I shall not let you be privy to my confidences. <laughs> so anyway, she presses a button and the seat flew back and there I was, about to be washed away on a tidal wave of passion when my mother banged on the bonnet with a rolling pin and gave her a minute to get out or make an honest man of me. <laughs> Men's work. <laughs> Warwick, shove it down about there. That's it, Warwick. There we are. There. Presenting the Bliss Pong Shop. Where would you like it? Just to go over there, you and you, take that counter away. Uh, don't move. Stand fast. <laughs> Captain Peacock, you do not tell my men to take that counter away. They are under my jurisprudence. <laughs> you tell me to take that counter away, and I tell them to take that counter away. Harmon, take that counter away. Mr. Harmon. Very well, Mr. Harmon. <laughs> what? <laughs> Will you please take that counter away? Right. You, you, counter. Out. Just a minute. Put that counter down. Mrs. Slogan. Captain Peacock, I do not respond to any man's finger. <laughs> you know, I used to have an aunt that said that. Me, <laughs> now. Mrs. Slogan. It is my understood prerogative as floor walker to summon any of my subordinates if I wish to give them my instructions. Now, will you please accede to my request? In a word, not on your Nelly. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? You can feel the tension mounting. <laughs> Mrs. Snowden, I shall count to five, and if you have not complied, then I shall make an adverse entry in my book. Two of them should get sent off. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Four and a half. <laughs> Five. Mrs. Slocum, truculent and impertinent. Captain Peacock, I may have been truculent, but I was certainly not impertinent. I've already entered impertinent in my book. Oh, well, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me get this clear. You wiggled your finger at Mrs. Slocum. 
I did not wiggle it, sir. I did that. <laughs> and Mrs. Locum took exception? Correct. What sort of exception did she take? <laughs> you dare, you peacock. I asked you a perfectly civil question. I was merely illustrating the gesture that Mrs. Slocum made to me. <laughs> Gestured with fingers. Yes, I've got that written down. Um, were there any witnesses to this sign? Well, we only saw it from a distance. For all I know, she might have only used one finger. Mm. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, did you see her raising two fingers? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I thought she was doing it to me. She often does. <laughs> mm. What, as an inflammatory sign? No, to save two seats for the canteen. <laughs> <laughs> so Captain Peacock might have misinterpreted this gesture. Yes. Are there any other complaints concerning Mrs. Slocum? Now, the next complaint I have against her is that she made a noise I objected to. Uh, what sort of noise? <laughs> Yes, that is an objectionable noise. Why did you do this, Mrs. Slocum? Well, his wiggling finger got right up my nose. <laughs> oh, Peacock, you didn't tell me this. You must give me all the facts. Now, let's start again. You put your finger up Mrs. Slocum's nose, <laughs> causing her to snort in, in a sort of... <laughs> Then, logically, she would put up two fingers to protect her nose from your probing digit. <laughs> this, in turn, Mr. Humphreys misinterpreted as a request for him to save her two seats in the canteen. <laughs> Have you got anything else written down in your book that you'd like me to clarify? <laughs> Not on your nose. <laughs> Oh, well, if that's it, there's no more to be said. Rather a waste of time, really. Yes, indeed. When am I going to get my counter back? Oh, not for a week. A young Mr. Grace has done a deal with Bliss Perfume, so I'm afraid we'll just have to grin and bear it. I find the two very rarely go together. <laughs> but um, we do have a problem, because the Bliss girl hasn't arrived, so I'm afraid you and Miss Brahms will have to handle the Bliss merchandise. I'm not sacrificing my commission to sell cheap scent, and I am unanimous in this. But the counter has to be manned. Well, there's only two of us, there's three a day. Why don't one of them do it? Ungrammatical, but logical. <laughs> the question is, which one? <laughs> Poo, what a pun. Well, I have to test it if I'm going to sell it. About that secret rendezvous. Ooh, it wouldn't be easy to have a secret rendezvous. <laughs> Everybody would know you'd been there. Lady and the Tramp. A bit more tramp than lady. Yeah. What's that? Gay divorce. <coughs> oh, I don't like that. Oh, we'll cancel that out. Mm. Poor, mm. what's that? Butch Cassidy. <laughs> Don't they smell awful when they all get together? Do you know my old headmaster would give a fortune to smell me now? <laughs> He'd say, I knew, I told you. <laughs> what sort of a school did you go to, Mr Humphreys? Mixed. Oh, yeah, girls and boys? No, just boys. <laughs> Mr Lucas, I'm just going to have a word with Captain Peacock. Will you take over from me? Certainly, Mr Ted. Ah, Stephen, are you free? At the moment, Mr. Tebbs, may I remind you that first names are used only in the canteen or after and before the bell. I see. In that case, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> oh, blimey, that was a short word. Tidy up that club drawer, Mr. Lucas. Well, it is tidy. <laughs> it isn't now. He got told you off, did he? <laughs> Into the tie drawer as well. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, I give in, I give in. Ah, Mr. Lucas, I'm glad to see you usefully employed in tidying the drawers. Thank you, sir. The tie drawer is also in a terrible mess. I suggest you tidy it up, Mr. Tebbs, instead of standing there twiddling your thumbs. I am not twiddling my thumbs. I'm in charge of this counter. And if I want my drawers untidy, I shall have them untidy. <laughs> Now, 
Let me get this clear. There's been yet another fracker on the floor. Uh, one thing I want to get straight right away. Did Captain Peacock put his finger up your nose? <laughs> oh, of course he didn't. Well, then what caused you to lose your temper? He was sticking his nose into my business. Ah. <laughs> Noses do come into it. I thought so. There's always a common factor, you know. This whole dispute is caused by the perfume counter. And what's perfume associated with? Noses. <laughs> Quite extraordinary. It's because Mr. Humphreys is on the perfume counter and unable to exercise his tidy influence on Mr. Tepp's counter. It's got nothing to do with tidiness, Mr. Rumbold. It's because Mr. Humphreys isn't with us and we're undermanned and that's upset Mr. Tepp, doesn't it? Right. There would be raised eyebrows in the trade if we were found out that I'd been alone in the jets with a junior. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I do take his point, don't you, Peacock? Absolutely, sir. But I didn't take Mr. Humphreys away. I would never allow Mr. Tebbs to have less than two assistant salesmen. You're quite right, Peacock. I was wrong. It's obviously causing bad feeling and I shall rectify it immediately. Yes, sir. Shall I ask uh, Mr. Humphreys to return? No, no. You will take his place. <laughs> <laughs> I will take his place? That's what I said. I must protest. No, no. It's not a matter for discussion. I've made a decision. I'm not taking over a senior salesman serving behind the men's counter. Oh, quite correct. You are taking over Mr. Humphrey's position as assistant salesman under Mr. Tebbs. <laughs> I'll show you the ropes. <laughs> you better sign for your tape and chalk. <laughs> if this gets into the Floor Walkers Gazette, you'll be ruined. <laughs> Let me get one thing straight. Mr. Lucas will still be under me, will he not? Of course. Good. We'll try it on in the fitting room. It's uh, just behind that curtain there. <laughs> Take over, Mr. Humphreys. Yes, Mrs. Slocum. I wouldn't be surprised to see a poppy growing over there in the spot where you used to stand. It, it's all over the building. I just couldn't believe it. Not Captain Peacock reduced to the ranks. I don't do, Harmon. Excuse me. Are you senior enough to sign for these sweaters? Oh, that's a swanky pen for a junior. I am not a junior. Now get about your business. Well, you want to be careful if you come down the stockroom. We always debag new boys. <laughs> What are you doing, Steve? Mr. <laughs> Lucas, you will continue to address me as Captain Peacock. And I would have thought that it was obvious even to a man of your poor intelligence that I am holding a sweater. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no,
Now, he likes it like this, you see, face down, fold that side over there like that, bend the arm down there, fold that one in like that, bend that arm down there, then over there like that, and there you are, you've got it, you see. You'll soon learn, a couple of weeks, you'll soon get the hang of it. I shall not be here in a couple of weeks. Well, that's up to Mr. Rumbold, isn't it? I mean, he goes like that and you jump. You know, I felt really sorry for you in there. I mean, I thought to myself, he made you look about that big. I thought to myself, what a come down, I thought. After all those glorious years in the pay corps. The Royal Army Service Corps. <laughs> Whatever it is. I mean, do you have to accept that sort of humiliation lying down? But I mean, still, what else can you do at your time of life? I mean, even if you resign and go to the Labour Exchange, what's going to happen? Yes, I can see it all now. There you are in the queue, you get up to the counter, you put in your card and the voice says, Now then, Peacock, what are we going to do with you, Mark? <laughs> What are your qualifications? We don't have no jobs, so nobody's standing around looking snooty all day. <laughs> you bus conductor Monday, next week. Lucas. <clears throat> tidy the handkerchief drawer. Well, it is tidy. <laughs> Why, <White> trash. <laughs> Blimey, she's got a right one in there. Oh, she should be so lucky. Four o'clock and not a drop sold. Uh, Miss Brahms, while you're at it, bring me another corset. The size 40 multi-hole jumbo expander. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw something like that, it was being used to restrain King Kong. You haven't seen what she's got in there. <laughs> Excuse me. No, you gave me quite a start. <laughs> I, I wonder if you could help me. Well, I'm just standing in for someone at the moment, but I'll do my best. Well, I'm not very happy with these stockings. What seems to be the complaint? Well, they ran as soon as I put them on. Well, yes, I think I'd do the same. <laughs> well, what are you going to do about it? Well, at the moment, I'm riveted to the spot. <laughs> well, I think the least you could do is to give me another pair. Oh, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, I'll give you two <laughs> pairs. There we are. And if these should run, don't hesitate to bring them back and show them to me. I could start a whole new way of life. <laughs> That's really very sweet of you. Oh, not at all. How could I resist such a lovely smile? You're a very charming young man. I'm quite sure you're going to go a long way. Do you know, the last time anyone said that to me, I was standing in a white surplice singing all things bright and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Men are so aggressive these days, aren't they? Yes. Isn't that the truth? Mm. <laughs> they only want one thing. Yes. They don't have much choice, do they? <laughs> Why don't you buy a hat? Oh, why'd you say that? Oh, I've got the very hat that'll go with those lovely eyes. <coughs> Not many people can wear hats. You've got a hat face. Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. <coughs> it's Dr. Zhivago. It's Garbo. It's Orient Express. It's reduced. <laughs> I like it. I'll have it. It's all on my husband's account anyway. Oh, in that case, why don't you treat yourself to a coat? <laughs> I don't suppose he'll be able to afford it, but let's just slip it on for fun. <laughs> oh, just the feel of it does something for me. Oh, yes, I find that the same. <laughs> Three thousand pounds? You'd have a heart attack. Oh, well, fortunately, it is black. <laughs> Have you got a long mirror? Well, I'm afraid it's engaged at the moment. Oh. Well, would you mind trying it on? Then I can stand back and look. Not at all. <laughs> As you can see, it's got a lovely high collar. Very haute couture. Deep pockets. A nice full back. Note the swell. <laughs> and of course, with high heels, you get that lovely bounce. <laughs> Tempted. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Humphreys! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Madam has practically decided to take this with her. But it's three thousand pounds. Well, no, and I'm having a commission. <laughs> not if I can persuade her to have something else, you're not. Good afternoon, madam. Are you being served, madam? <laughs> oh, blimey! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Bronze, uh, bring the fox. Which one? 
the 3,000 Nika one. <laughs> I am the senior sales lady. I'm so sorry I wasn't here to help you. Oh, that's quite all right. I've been very well looked after. <laughs> yes. Now, how about this, madam? Why don't you try this on before you make up your mind? Well, do you mind trying it on? It gives me a better idea. Well, certainly, madam. Give me on, Miss Browns. Oh, drama lining's gone. Come here. You see, this is a casual, rough round style. Very easy to get on and off. <laughs> Where's the other one? It's in the lining. What do you think? <laughs> you look like a cross between Nelson and Basil Brush. <laughs> sure about the colour. Do you know, I, I'm rather sold on the black. <laughs> Get me that one, the one at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you buy a cheap coat. <laughs> now this one is suitable for almost any occasion. It's Persian lamb. And it's a thousand pounds cheaper than the one he's wearing. Suitable for day wear? Or a night at the opera? Mm, I remember Groucho Marx wearing it. <laughs> Do you know, that really is rather nice. Would you mind modelling it for me? Well, certainly, madam. Ignore the shoes. <laughs> um, could I see yours again? Sir. <laughs> Decide. It's very distracting seeing those trousers and that hair. Hang on a minute. <laughs> All things bright and beautiful. <laughs> 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 Good afternoon. <laughs> Drat. Good afternoon, everybody. Young Mr. Grace. Oh, good, good afternoon, afternoon, Mr. Grace. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Mr. Grace. Mr. Grace. Good afternoon, Pink. Are you being demoted, I see? A purely a temporary measure, sir. He's been scribbling on the walls again. <laughs> that humorous cartoon, sir, was 15 years ago. I thought he got your ears very well. Uh, was that the new girl from Bliss? Uh, no, no, sir, that's not the Bliss girl. Uh, she couldn't get here because of the fog. Said very attractive substitute. <laughs> Have you got a boyfriend? Not at the moment. <laughs> I've got a table at uh, Romano's with caviar and a snap-up dinner. Um, can to join me? Well, it is Monday, and my mother's only got cottage pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's settled then. <laughs> 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 